Hi guys, so I thought I would do a quick recap of the stuff that you've been doing this week for equations of motion. Um, as you'll have noticed, I've put some of the, um, I've made a new Google Drive um, that I've invited you all to be able to view. So I'll keep putting all the slides as we go through them, all the materials um, that you need on that um, Google Drive and you can just access that whenever you need to. So as a recap then, this week you have been looking at equations of motion, the new equations that I introduced to you um, in the last video. Um, so we had v squared equals u squared plus 2as and we had s equals u plus a half a t squared, those were the main ones. Hopefully you found that okay. Um, you've done the questions this week and hopefully self-marked. Um, so what I will do now is go on to, and oh sorry, this one as well. So S equals a half U plus V times T. So those are the questions. Um, now what we're gonna be looking at um, is graphs of motion. Now, you would have had a go at looking at the revision graphs of motion for National 5 stuff when you did speed and acceleration. So the di big difference between velocity time graphs in higher is we look at things that are changing direction, um, especially things that are, say, for example, um, in free fall that are rebounding. So for example, a ball that's bouncing off of the ground or something that's being thrown directly upwards, and as obviously, as we know, gravity is going to um, cause it to come back down again. So we need to have a bit more of a sophisticated method of looking at um, graphs of motion. So this is just a basic one here then. So this is just something that is moving. Um, we've got it starting here. Um, and it is um, increasing its speed um, so between the times of 0 and 4 seconds um, it goes from 0 mile, uh, meters per second to 8 meters per second and it has a constant acceleration so this is this um, this slope part here um, between here and here it's still moving um, except its velocity is remaining at 8 meters per second between 4 seconds and 7. So for 3 seconds here, it's um, traveling at four meters, uh, sorry, 8 meters per second constantly. Um, so we'd call that a constant velocity. Um, and then at 7 seconds, the speed decreases um, steadily. So it goes from being 8 meters per second all the way down to 0 in that three seconds here, and that's what we call deceleration. So this should all be recap from National 5. Nice, simple graph of motion. If we were to try and work out the um, distance that um, whatever this is, this, whatever this vehicle or person is that's traveling, um, we would find the area under the graph because the area under a velocity time graph is displacement. Um, and the gradient of the graph, which is, for example, the gradient here um, is the um, acceleration. So we've got acceleration here. So we do V minus U over T, which is a gradient, uh, because that is just um, uh, y one, uh, y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Um, here, obviously, there's no gradient because it's a flat line. It's constant velocity. And here we've got deacceleration. So again, you could work out the gradient to work out the deacceleration at that point. Um, so now let's look at um, if an object has a constant positive acceleration, then we get the following graphs of motion. So one on the left here. So we're going from zero upwards. Um, now this um, is a displacement time graph because remember we use S for displacement. Um, so the gradient of a, an ST or a displacement time graph is positive and increasing by the same amount each time. Um, this is a velocity time graph here um, and we've got um, again we've got this acceleration so again the gradient of that would then be the acceleration and this is just an acceleration time graph which just shows 
that something's got constant acceleration um, with that flat line there. Um, so an acceleration time graph shows the gradient of the velocity time graph at all points. So we could work out the acceleration between here and here. Um, obviously that's constant acceleration and that's deacceleration. Um, if we were to transpose this into an acceleration time graph um, from this information, so what they've done here to get the acceleration, they've done so v minus u, so it was obviously 8 minus 0 is 8, divide that by 20, 8 divided by 20 is 0 0.4 meters per second squared. So for the first part, we've got an acceleration of 0 0.4 meters per second squared for the first 20 seconds because that's the first bit of acceleration there. Um, between 20 and 40 seconds, we've got a constant acceleration, um, or sort of no acceleration, sorry, because it's constant, uh, constant speed. So the zero acceleration here, so at 20 seconds it just goes down to zero, and it's zero, the acceleration is zero between 20 and 40, which is representing this bit is that bit there. Um, then at 40 seconds it deaccelerates and it does that between 40 and I assume that's around 48. Um, so what they've done is they've worked that out. So they've done V minus U. So we've got V which is 8 divided by, um, let's say that's uh, 18 there. Uh, sorry, 8 uh, because we've got, um, sorry it's 48. So yeah, so that's 48. So between 40 and 48 is 8, so it's 8 divided by 8, which is 1, um, and as you can see here, um, and it's negative because if anything is deaccelerating, slowing down, it's a negative acceleration. So we go to the negative part of the graph here and say that between this point and this point, we have negative acceleration of 1. So that is how this graph, by using these values to work out the acceleration, obviously zero acceleration, deacceleration, that is what that would look like there. What about if it changes in direction then? So this is where we get a slightly more sophisticated graph and from this information, from this graph, we should be able to take um, some information as to what's happening. So, um, Let's look at a bouncing ball then. So consider a ball that is dropped from rest. So we call downwards positive. So when it comes to what we call sign convention, so for example, if something is being dropped, um, we would say it has positive gravity. So positive acceleration due to gravity. Um, and we'd also say if something's being dropped, it's got positive um, velocity. So we say that downwards is positive, which would then obviously mean that upwards, anything that's been thrown up um, has a negative velocity or a negative um, acceleration. But we'll, that should become a bit more clear um, in a wee minute. So in this graph then, if we're saying that downwards is positive, um, this means that um, it's got a ball drop from rest this is obviously the positive um, part of the graph, this is the negative. So it starts um, at zero, so it's being dropped from a height. Um, obviously initially it has a zero speed, it then goes down, so it has a positive velocity. Um, and then until it reaches four meters per second. So what happens at four meters per second? Well at four meters per second, it hits the ground. This is what we call the bounce part of the graph. So it's reaching, so it's been dropped, reaches four meters per second when it lands on the ground and then it rebounds. So this is what a rebound looks like because when it rebounds it changes its direction. So it goes from being positive, having a positive um, velocity, momentarily goes to zero as it hits the floor and then changes its direction to have a negative velocity, a negative upward velocity um, and in this case its negative upward velocity is around 3 meters per second. So being dropped from a height, travels downwards, reaches 4 meters per second, rebounds, 
momentarily goes to zero speed as obviously it, it, it touches the ground. Then it obviously, um, due to the, to the the way that the ball um, transfers its energy to the ground and then vice versa, um, obviously that um, interaction of forces means that the, the ball then travels up again, but it loses some energy, so it hasn't quite got the same upward velocity as it landed. Um, so we end up with a, an upward velocity now as it lands and then goes back up again. It's, it's three meters per second. And then it would travel up, and um, what happens here? Well, obviously goes to zero. This is at the point at which it reaches its highest point before it drops again. Obviously, when it drops again, it has this positive velocity. So this is basically the shape of the graph um, for a bouncing ball. So ball dropped ball accelerates downwards in the positive direction, ball hits the ground, ball leaves the ground with a negative velocity, ball decelerates upwards in the negative direction until it reaches its highest point, which is uh, rebound height at 0 0.7 seconds, so at 0 0.7 seconds it reaches its highest point, obviously we know that it's at highest point because it momentarily goes to zero. Um, then it repeats and obviously as it goes along it's going to be um, losing energy each time it bounces so eventually it will stop and will not continue. So the gradient is always positive when the ball is in the air. So this is because the ball is speeding up on the way down and slowing down on the way back up. Obviously, as we know, if we drop something momentarily, um, obviously it has a, a zero um, velocity at the point it's being dropped and then acceleration means that it accelerates to the ground, so therefore its um, velocity increases. So when something is going down the way, its velocity is going to increase, so it's gonna have a positive gradient. If it's going up the way, um, it's going to have a negative acceleration, um, but it's still a positive gradient. So the gradient is obviously 9.8 meters per second. The acceleration of something that is um, uh, due to gravity um, will obviously be the acceleration due to gravity. So it's entirely up to you which direction you call positive and which ones you call negative. Um, Often, and you'll see in a minute when I give you an example question, it will tell you what is the sign convention. So personally, if something's falling um, from a height, I would like to say that it has a positive downward um, velocity because I use positive um, downwards acceleration due to gravity. So um, that's the best way, I think. Um, however, as you look at the graph, sometimes it can be a bit confusing. So it can be done either way. Um, as long as it's clear which way you've used and also the question will probably tell you um, which direction it's calling positive and which one it's calling negative. So this is basically two graphs showing exactly the same thing, it's just that they've used, this graph has used falling as a negative. Now some people like this because it looks like it is actually falling if you think about it. So it's kind of going down, it's falling, it's bouncing um, and um, then it's then it's rising, it's rising up. So um, it's up to you um, which way you do it but I, I would like, I would prefer this way to be honest. So I prefer to say right it starts at zero, it's got positive velocity downwards so it's falling it then rebounds, it's then going up, it's then momentarily going to zero, and then it's going down again, it's rebounding, going up, momentarily goes to zero, and then down again. But you can say that they're both correct, they've just got different sign conventions. So, let's have a look at an example question then. So this is actually from the tutorial book. So this is questions eight and nine. So I'll go through these um, with you today and then you can um, do them as part of the um, work set or you can skip them, but as long as you understand how to do them. Um, so 
The grass shows the velocity of a ball that is dropped and bounces on an, on the floor. An upwards direction is taken as being positive. So up is positive and down is negative. So it might actually help you to draw a diagram. So if we're saying that upwards is positive downwards is negative and that just keeps us right um, and the graph shows a velocity ball that is dropped and bounces on the floor so we're basically we're starting off here's our ball here's our floor so it's going down and as we can see here downwards is negative um, obviously it then rebounds up so that would be positive and then it reaches zero and then goes um, down again which is negative and then it will rebound up and it goes slightly less high this time um, so obviously that's zero that's zero and then that is positive and then it keeps going and going and going until obviously it just doesn't bounce any longer. So this information is now being put into this graph. And if you look at the two, hopefully it should make sense. So between zero, O and B, we've got negative. So it's falling. And then B and C is the bounce. That's that very first bounce here. So we could say that this is... Um, zero that is b b to c is the bounce um c to d is between here and here um and then obviously momentarily goes to zero and then that's uh, d to e and uh, none of that happens because that would just be this carries on going on. So I can get rid of that. So, in which direction is the ball travelling during section O to B? So O to B, it's going down. Um, between the describe the velocity of the ball as as represented by the section C D. So C D. Um, it's got an upwards um, velocity and obviously it's decreasing because it's going upwards our velocities decrease when they're going upwards because it's going against gravity um, and C describe the velocity of the ball as represented by D to E D to E is falling so it has got a downwards velocity which is increasing because it's falling and then what happens to the ball at the time represented by point B so B is the bounce so it bounces rebounds so it goes from falling to landing to going up again and what happened to the ball at the time represented by point C? Point C um, is where it um, now has a positive uh, direction because it's going up the way. So it goes in the bounce, it needs to go obviously instantly from having a negative um, velocity to a positive. So we kind of have to go straight up to the point of C. So this is still the rebound here. This is still point C, but at point C is a point at which it starts to go up again um, until obviously it reaches um, the zero uh, meters per second there. So um, it changes direction at C. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It does take a bit of practice. It does take a little bit of getting your head around. I've got another question for you here that I thought we'd go through as well. So a ball is thrown vertically upwards 
and returns to the thrower three seconds later. So again, let's draw a picture. So somebody um, is throwing a ball up the way. Let's just say this is someone's hand. That's the ball. You will realise very quickly that I have zero artistic skills. I'm not going to try it and draw a hand. I'm just going to do this sort of squiggle here to represent the hand. So it's been thrown vertically upwards. And then obviously it is going to have to reach zero and then go down again um, and return to the person's hand. And all of this happens in three seconds. So in that three seconds, it's gone up. It's then stopped. So zero meters per second. And then it's gone down and then obviously that's where it goes uh, to zero again so what we've got to do is look at a graph that represents something uh, going up um, and then stopping and um, then going down again so the answer is D because uh, something that's going up has got a negative acceleration, so that's in the negative, sorry, negative velocity here, or negative acceleration and negative velocity. So it's going from um, a negative, whatever that is, um, and then it's going to um, decrease its velocity because it's going up till it gets to zero, which is obviously where it stops, that point here, and then it has a positive velocity because it's going down. Um, and then that is where it lands on the person's hand. So this graph here represents that situation. So guys, I hope this kind of makes sense. Um, the PowerPoint is on Google Drive, um, so have a chance to have a look through it yourself. Try the questions, I'll post the questions up on the Classroom um, and if there are any issues, we can do Google Meet and go through it all.